Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm giving you guys my top 10 things I want in the next Spider-Man trilogy in the MCU. This video will contain massive spoilers for Spider-Man No Way Home as we're going to be talking about what's next for the MCU Spider-Man. Before we get into it, if you guys are new in here, make sure to subscribe and turn notifications on so you don't miss any time up new video or go live. Both of us need more time. Let's get into it. Before we get into my top 10 things that I want in the next trilogy for the MCU Spider-Man, we kind of have to go over the groundwork and the plan that the MCU Spider-Man is going to have moving forward because inevitably, MCU Spider-Man is going to be written out. I think it's going to be through death because Tom Holland in many recent interviews has said that he doesn't want to be playing Spider-Man until he's like 30 or 35 just because he doesn't want it to be his defining role if that makes sense. For example, whenever you think of Robert Downey Jr., you automatically think of Iron Man. Even if he plays, he's played Sherlock Holmes, he's played Dr. Doolittle, two other iconic characters, but Iron Man is just too iconic at this point. Same thing for Tom Holland as Spider-Man. I don't know what he's talking about. I think he's already too iconic. Like, he would have had to stop after right after homecoming honestly after civil war he was already a pretty iconic spider-man because he was the youngest one which already made him stand out from the rest which made him a lot more different which already made him massively popular but with all that aside i just want to kind of lay out the groundwork so tom holland is actually 25 right now and if he wants to play stop playing spider-man around 30 years old that would be one spider-man movie every two years and i'm going to refer to all of his new movies as spider-man one two and three i'm not going to give them any specific name i'm just going to go by one two and three just know i'm talking about a future college trilogy so in spider-man 1 he would be 27 years old playing spider-man and then two years later in spider-man 2 he would be 29 and spider-man 3 he would be 31 and he would again effectively be written out after spider-man 3 and this is where my ideas come in i think a lot of my ideas have to do with the fact that he's going to be written off after that third movie and i think that the mcu will probably use miles and that's my first point i'm going to be talking about another character that will heavily be influenced by miles and peter in the mcu and all that kind of stuff but that would be my last thing on the list so stay tuned for that because that i think will deserve a full explanation on how i think peter parker will be written off in general but now i want to get into some of the basic storylines and plot points that i do want in the mcu spider-man next trilogy the first thing is i want peter to be a scientist and or work at the daily bugle i think these are two basics i think the spider-man ps4 game did it best he was a scientist working with Otto, and at the same time he was still working for the daily bugle I think it's very, very interesting that Peter in Spider-Man No Way Home was just a lot more on his science -y side while trying to help fix the villains. And we saw all of the Peters together working on cures for the villains in the lab sequence. And overall, we just saw more of a science-y and smart side of Tom Holland's Peter Parker, which makes me really intrigued and really excited to see what that, what that really path leads down to. Also, him working at the Daily Bugle, he needs some sort of income. The scientist thing could still probably be just like an internship while he's in college but he still needs to make money since he doesn't have anyone else around him so the daily bugle would be a good way to do that but that being said my third thing on the list is harry osborne i don't want norman osborne in the mcu i think norman osborne should basically be like he was in tasm 2 effectively just written out before he's even written in i think that we should have backstory on harry but i don't think we should have an on-screen norman osborne the reason for that is because i think willem dafoe is just too good you either trick or drown spider-man I don't want I feel bad for the actor that get, gets cast as Norman Osborn. My fan cast is Matthew McConaughey. He's very generic, but in general, I just don't want one. I feel like that would like there's no purpose for it. We've already got Norman Osborn. I feel like it would be easier if we had Harry. Also, I want Harry to be friends with Peter. I want them to have a close relationship. And this would actually be great for Peter because this would be one person that he trusts a lot now that he doesn't have Ned, now that he doesn't have MJ. It would be really interesting to see that the one person he now trusts again betrays him at the end and obviously becomes a villain. Harry Osborne is just a very interesting character and my fan cast for Harry is Timothy Chalamet. The reason for this is because number one, I, I think Timothy Chalamet, he seems like he's very innocent, but when he puts on that devious performance, he goes all out and I think he can be so good, so evil and just be so two-faced in the MCU and I'm very excited if he does end up being Harry Osborne. I think that would be the perfect casting. Initially, I was really against it, but I've grown more on it 
now. But now getting more on the villain side of things, first off, starting off with like an anti-hero type of character, I would love to see Black Cat. This would be probably Peter's first romantic relationship. I think it would be very interesting to see all of that play out. Obviously, Peter already has trust issues because obviously he can't trust anyone because he doesn't know anyone. And so I think it would be a great way to start it off, maybe introduce some more side characters. We are really close to Black Cat and the Amazing Spider-Man 2, but nevertheless, I'm just, that's just, this is just a small one. This is just a character I would like to see, especially after the Spider-Man PS4 game. I'm just very excited to see what they do with Black Cat if they use her at all. So now getting to the villain villains, Scorpion in fifth place is another thing that I want in the MCU Spider-Man trilogy. I do think that Scorpion is going to be a great villain. He was teased in the end of Spider-Man Homecoming, and he has a lot to correlate with my number six, which would be Wilson Fisk. Spoilers for Hawkeye season finale, but we did see Wilson Fisk at the end of that, so we know he's still there. He did get shot, but in the comics, he's fine, so I doubt that he's actually dead. It would be super crazy to if Wilson Fisk just had a cameo, but he's paying for suit upgrades. He's paying and bailing these villains out of jail and literally sending them all to Spider-Man. It would be so interesting to see that because also we do know that Scorpion is in jail. Same thing with Vulture. I don't know. It would be very interesting to see some mob leader just to break all of these villains out of jail. And over time, they form a new Sinister Six and it's all due to one guy, Wilson Fisk, freeing them all just over time. Just This would be a thing that's slowly pieced together and over time it comes together and it just becomes this one massive battle, Sinister Six versus Spider-Man. But again, keeping on track with the villains in seventh place is Craven the Hunter. Now, I know that Craven the Hunter was the initial plan for Spider-Man 3 where Spider-Man was supposed to be on the hunt instead of being Spider-Man No Way Home, blah, blah, blah. blah. It, I, I love that idea personally. I mean, Sp the Spider-Verse is great. Like, I, I'm actually glad we got that, but I'm kind of sad that we didn't get that storyline and I would love to see another bounty on Spider-Man's head just in general. Even like J. Jonah Jameson at the Daily Bugle could help fund these things going on because he thinks Spider-Man is a menace. He wants Spider-Man to be taken down and it would be a great way for, again, J. Jonah Jameson to have a big part of this, but mainly Wilson Fisk. Wilson Fisk could free these villains from jail, put a bounty on Spider-Man's head and they could all go after him. And we also know that Craven Hunter is already getting a solo project over at Sony. And so I think Sony's going to be building this up. Aaron Taylor Johnson, I think will be a great Craven, And I can't wait for his solo movie and to see how that influences his relationship with all these other Sony verse characters. And another villain that I want to talk about is Martin Lee, AKA Mr. Negative, which we did see in Spider-Man PS4. I am rocking the Spider-Man PS4 shirt right here. But the thing is, I don't necessarily need Martin Lee as Mr. Negative. I would just love to see Martin Lee as Martin Lee. He's, I think, the founder of Feast, and we got introduced to Feast in Spider-Man No Way Home. It would also make sense if they're introducing Miles. He could also be working there, volunteering there, as we, as I mentioned Miles before, and I'll be talking more about him later. Martin Lee is just an important figure there, and as time goes on, once again, Peter can have trust issues with Martin Lee as he ends up having in Spider-Man PS4. And again, I know I'm basing a lot of this off of Spider-Man PS4, a lot of my ideas, but I'm currently replaying the game, so it's kind of ingrained in my head. But again, I don't need to see Martin Lee as Mr. Negative. He could just have some affiliation to the villains, and even if he doesn't, he's still just a cool character overall to have in the mix of things, especially since Feast is already introduced. Aunt May is already dead, and so who else is going to lead Feast? We could be the founder, Martin Lee. With that being said, the ninth thing that I want in the MCU Spider-Man second trilogy is Venom. Now, I'm going to be going on. This is my 10th thing because now I'm going to be explaining how I want this whole Venom storyline to work. So basically, and we're just going to speed through the trilogy. Say we're at the third movie right like we get these small villain things right spider-man basically will die he has to be written off if they're going to keep tom holland spider-man and not like do some multiverse stuff and bring in another spider-man dude and not go to miles and this is where i'm bringing in miles from earlier if miles morales is in the mcu they can just make him the new spider-man something like what they did in into the spider-verse spider-man and venom could have a back and forth where the symbiote is on spider-man maybe even at the end of the second spider-man movie in the new trilogy and then in this third movie Spider-Man decides, okay, this is my fight. I'm the one who enraged Venom and Eddie Brock and all. Eddie Brock can be thrown into this wherever. It doesn't really matter. This is where the Daily Bugle thing comes in. But again, I'm fast forwarding to Spider-Man 3 where basically Venom and Spider-Man would have bad blood and then Spider-Man would realize, okay, this is my fight to take. Miles, you don't need to be fighting in this. Miles, you don't need to be like helping me. This is my battle. I can do this myself. And at this point, Miles would have to have already been slightly established. But I think that Miles could be just introduced in Spider-Man 3 as a Spider-Man who's been swinging around, but he's not that big of a deal, kind of how he is at the end of Spider-Man PS4. And we have no real backstory on him. We just know that he has become the new Spider-Man. We just know that he is on his way 
it up basically but this will make his character arc way more interesting because number one if we don't know much about him but he still feels a lot of guilt for not going to help spider-man when he dies to venom and then he avenges venom and then he's our new spider-man whether marvel studios like the mcu is going to be making the miles morales movies down the line that doesn't really matter here i'm just talking about moving the mantle and still killing off tom holland spider-man i think this will work perfectly because obviously miles would have vengeance also seeing peter parker die live action is something we've never seen before i really hope that happens especially if we're passing the mantle on to miles because that's something that could impact his life forever i think in the comics his mom dies and that's what kind of inspires him but what if that doesn't happen in this version what if it's peter parker that dies that inspires him similar to what it was in into the spider verse i feel like a lot of the stuff i just said was very simple i just overcomplicated it but that's basically my idea for the college trilogy for the mcu spider-man let me know some of your ideas for this next trilogy in the comments down below thank you so much for watching i'll see you next time peace